Hi everyone, Mr H again, ready to read you the next part of the owl who was afraid of the dark. This is chapter two. Can you remember what happened in chapter one? We met Plop, who's a little barn owl. And he's like every other barn owl, except he's afraid of the dark. And he tries to find things out. His mum sends him out into the world to try and find things out. And he met, meets this boy. And the little boy is getting ready for bonfire night, for fireworks. So at the end of, this, of the chapter, which was called Dark is Exciting, we end up with his mum and dad and Plop sitting at the top of a tree watching the fireworks going on around them. But Plop still is afraid of the dark. He doesn't like it at all, as he says. Well, we've got chapter two now, and it carries on from where we left off. And this chapter's called Dark is Kind. When the very last firework had faded away, Mr. Barn Owl turned to Plop. Well, son, he said, I'm off hunting now. Would you like to come? Plop looked at the darkness all around them. It seemed even blacker than the bright fire after the bright fireworks. Um, not this time. Thank you. Um, I can't see. I've got stars in my eyes. I see, said his father. In that case, I shall have to go by myself. And he floated off into the darkness like a great white moth. Plop turned to his mother in distress. I wanted to go with him. I want to like the dark. It's just that I don't seem to be able to. You will be able to, Plop. I'm quite sure about that. I'm not sure said Plop. Well, I am, said his mother. Now, come on, you'd better have your rest. You were awake half the day. So Plop had his midnight rest, and when he woke up, his father was back with dinner. Plop swallowed it in one huge gulp. That was nice, he said. What was it? A mouse, said Mr. Barnell. I like mouse, said Plop. What's next? I have no idea, his father said. It's your mother's turn now. You'll have to wait and see what she brings back. Plop was always hungry, and his mother and father were kept very busy bringing him food all night long. When daylight came, they were very tired and just wanted to go to sleep. Bedtime, Plop, said Mrs. Barnell. I don't want to go to bed, said Plop. I want to be a day bird. Well, I am a night bird, said his mother. And if your father and I don't get any sleep today, you won't get anything to eat tonight. Now, Plop did not like the sound of that at all. So he drew himself up tall and straight, well, as tall as he could, and tried to sleep. He did sleep for half the morning, but when he woke up, he was full of beans, or perhaps was it mouse? And he could just not get back to sleep. He jiggled up and down on the branch where his poor parents were trying to roost. He practiced standing on one leg and taking off and landing and other important things that little owls have to learn to do. Then he thought he would try out his voice. He tried a real grown-up barn owl noise. Eek! He screeched. Eek! It sounded like the noise a cat makes if you accidentally tread upon its tail. Plop was very pleased with it. Mrs. Barn owl was not. She half opened one bleary eye. Plop, dear, she said. Wouldn't you like to go down into the world again? and find out some more about the dark. Now, said Plop. Now, said his mother. 
Don't you want to hear my screech first? It's getting jolly good. I heard it, his mother said. Look, there's an old lady in a deck chair down there in that garden. Go and disturb, I mean, go and find out what she thinks about the dark. So Plop shut his eyes, took a deep breath and fell off the branch. He did not get his wings working this time. He fell faster and faster and finally plunged at the old woman's feet with an earth-shaking thud. Gracious, said the old lady, a thunderbolt. Uh, 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 actually, I'm a bar now, said the thunderbolt, well, thunderbolt when he'd got his breath back. Really, said the old lady, peering at Plop over the top of her glasses. I do beg your pardon. My eyes are not as good as they used to be. How nice of you to uh, uh, drop in. Well, it wasn't nice of me, actually, Plop said truthfully. I came to ask you about something. Oh, did you? said the old lady. Now, what could it be, I wonder? I wanted to ask you about the dark. You see, I'm a bit afraid of it, and that's rather awkward for an owl. We're supposed to be night birds. That is a problem, said the old lady. Have you tried carrots? What? Don't say what. Say, I beg your pardon, if you don't hear the first time. I said, have you tried carrots? Wonderful things, carrots. I don't think barn owls have carrots. Not, not barn owls anyway. Ah, oh, a pity. I've always sworn by carrots for helping one to see in the dark. I can see in the dark, said Plop. I can see for miles and miles. Now, don't boast. It is not nice for little boys to boast. The old lady leaned forward and peered closely at Plop. I suppose you are a little boy. It is difficult to tell these days. They all look the same. Yes, said Plop. I am a boy, Owl, and I want to go hunting with Daddy, but he's always hunting in the dark, and I'm afraid of it. Oh, how very odd, said the old lady. Now, I love the dark. I expect you will, you will when you're my age. You see, dark is kind. Tell me, Plop said. Please, said the old lady, such a little word, but it works wonders. Uh, tell me, please, said Plop ob obediently. Well, now, the old lady began, dark is kind in all sorts of ways. Dark hides things like shabby furniture in the hall and the carpet. It hides my wrinkles and my gnarled old hands. I can forget that I'm old in the dark. I don't think owls get wrinkles, said Plop. Not barn owls, anyway. They just get a bit moth-eaten looking. Don't interrupt, said the old lady. It is very rude to interrupt. Where was I? Ah, uh, yes. Dark is kind when you are old. I can sit in the dark and remember. I remember my dear husband and my children when they were small and all the good things we had together. I am never lonely in the dark. I haven't got much to remember yet, said Plop. I'm rather new, you see. Dark is quiet too, said the old lady, looking hard at Plop. Dark is restful, unlike a little owl, I know. Me, said Plop. You, said the old lady. When I was a little girl, children were seen but not heard. I'm not children, said Plop. I am a bar now. Same thing, said the old lady. You remind me very much of my son William when he was about four. He had the same knackety knees. Are my knees knackety? asked Plop, squinting downwards. I can't see them. My tummy gets in the way. 
Very, said the old lady, but I expect they'll straighten out in time. Williams did. Now, I'm going indoors to have a little rest. Plop was surprised. I thought it was only owls who slept in the daytime, he said. Are you a night bird too? The old lady smiled. No, just an old bird, a very tired old bird. Oh, goodbye then. I'll go now, said Plop. Thank you for telling me about the dark. He fluttered up to the old lady's shoulders and nibbled her ear very gently. The old lady was enchanted. Oh, an owl kiss, she said. Owl, how very kind. Plop jumped down again and bobbed his funny little bow. Oh, such charming manners, said the old lady. And then Plop took a little run, spread his wings and flew up to the landing branch. Well, said his mother, the old lady said, dark is kind. And what do you think, Plop? I still do not like it at all. Do you think my knees are knackety? Of course, said his mother. All little barn owls have knackety knees. Oh, good, said Plop. And what do you think the old lady said? She said children should not be see should be seen, but not heard. Mr. Barnow opened one sleepy eye. Here, here, he said. And that's the end of chapter two. Hope you enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed reading it to you. And it'll be good to see your pictures, your messages and other things. So remember, you can email me at reception at mosfits.com and I'll come back to chapter three next week because this is the Easter weekend. It's Good Friday today. And then on Easter Sunday, and we've got Easter Monday, and it's a celebration of Easter. And I'm sure you'll be eating lots of chocolate and maybe finding some eggs. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful time. And for those of you that are Christians that are celebrating this as a Christian festival, I wish you a very happy Easter. I'll be celebrating it with my church online, <laughs> virtual church, we call it. Have a wonderful Easter, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.